Welcome, everyone, to the Tether Shipyards. I am Takeshi Yamato, the Yardmaster, joining our host, the House Go Gamer. Yo. Today, we are taking a look at the next Wars ship, the Imperial 2 Star Destroyer. All big guns, all the time. That was the general thought process for the Imperial 2 class. Most of her point defense weapons have been completely axed. Understand right. so. Right. All, orbital bombardment and all that. Yeah. And this introduces a new set of weapon systems. Yes. Octuple heavy turbo laser batteries. For those who don't understand what octuple, octuple means, it means eight. Yeah, They're, these those turrets have eight barrels. So much so that they are placed in barbettes rather than turrets. So this thing is more designed for orbital bombardment and anti-capital ship combat than they are for, you know... General purpose fighters. stuff. Which the ISD-1 is ironically better at. Yeah. That's not saying much, considering the Imperial class has issues. Yeah. The Imperial 2 just has more. And again, it still has the hangar bays, which, again, are a series... are one of the bigger weak spots of an ISD. Now, Seriously, you... Now, if we, uh cover the Tector subtype. We will be discussing how this ship doesn't have any ma large hangar bays, just one for a goddamn shuttle. Yeah. But, really, what can you do with this thing? Yeah. I mean, it could be worse. It could be the Venator. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. The ISD-2 has a number of very notable and very interesting vessels. However, the one everyone is probably aware of due to the fame of its commanding officers is the Chimera. First commanded by Captain Gilad Pelion, later Grand Admiral, nicknamed the Old Man of the Empire. Yeah. And, of course... Mithron Udu Odo. Also known as... Fraaaaat! I was getting to that. <laughs> yes, I'm probably well aware that I did not pronounce his co his chis name properly. I don't exactly get many opportunities to pronounce it. Yeah. Regardless, course, Thrawn, yeah. Thrawn used this vessel quite well during his little war against the New Republic in 9 ABY, to the point where he nearly destroyed it. Yeah. Of course, plot armor. Freaking rebels. Yeah. Fortunately, the Chimera and Pelion survived for the next 30 years. That says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, this ship, one of the oldest ISDs around, survived pretty much everything. Yeah. And was only decommissioned because she had finally reached 50 plus years old. Wow. Not something you screw with. Yeah, that's something you screw with indeed. If anything, this could be said to be the Enterprise, the 1701 of ISDs. Yeah, we might do the Chimera, we might do the Chimera as a uh, hero ship. But that will have to wait for another day. And yeah. I will probably use the Rebels Disney version just to make it unique. Yep. And let's get to statting this thing. We're More giving guns. this thing a <laughs> yeah. We're giving this thing an entered service date of zero ABY. And basically, it came into service soon after Yavin. 
For systems values, we're starting with the ISD1 base. COM7, Computer7, seven, Engine7, seven, Sensor7, seven, Structure10, Weapons11. I'm thinking probably just put weapons up to 12. Indeed. I mean, seriously. Yeah. 64. High energy weapon systems. Now, I rag on Star Wars not being able to do as much damage as Trek ships. And if you look at the actual lore for both sides, you'll see why. But even but... I know that a Trek ship is not going to have a fun time with an ISD at point blank range. Yeah, Long especially... range, sure, it'll win the fight every time. But, but get in close. The I... Yeah, if an ISD-2 can get in close, it will deal a hell of a lot of damage. And department-wise, I think keeping it the same as the ISD-1, two points of command, one point in security. These ships do often serve as command vessels, so I don't see any point in changing it. Yep. Mission profiles are probably the same kind of thing, either flagship or tax or warship. Strategic and diplomatic or tactical could possibly work as well, but those are sort of watered-down versions of uh, flagship and warship. Not much reason to put them in. Those could be yeah. used for ships like the Nebulon B. Yeah. Though I think technically it's it's not that the strategic and diplomatic and tactical operations are watered down of the flagship and warship respectively strategic and diplomatic came a strategic and diplomatic and tactical came first in STA with the core rule book with warship and flagship going in uh, in utopia planitia so you could say the latter two so you could say strategic so you could say flagship and warship are supercharged versions of the other one of the of strategic and diplomatic and tactical operations respectively anyway tangents aside scale 8 starship again and weapons are heavy turbo laser cannons i got rid of the laser cannons because they got rid of most of the point defense guns and a strength 7 tractor beam again a very Cause... impressive all big guns design however it requires a few uh, smaller escorts yeah and talents uh, mostly the same again a blade of armor two instances of extensive hangar bays I'd probably get rid of point defense system, so reduce so only five talents, but two instances of secondary reactors. Perhaps the uh, sixty-four big guns of doom could be used as a trait. Hmm. Possibly. Overloading. Is there an overload weapons system talent? Uh, checking. I don't think so, but uh, basically, it... this ship can deal more anti-ship damage. Hmm. Right. Um. Reduce a challenge die. All right. We could do that as a special rule. The ex extra guns add. Well, yeah, we could. Basic, yeah, we could basically add an extra challenge die to the weapons values. To, well, reduce just, the challenge die. Make it oh, a little easier, because. Oh, that, 64 that, turbo laser cannons. <laughs> oh, that would that would be like reducing difficulty. That's challenge the, die. Challenge die are what you roll when you're dealing da when you're actually dealing damage. Yeah, good point. Anyway, well, we'll we'll think about that. But a blade of armor, two instances extensive hangar bays, and two instances secondary reactors. Maybe advanced shields. 
Well, it is technically a little bit more advanced than the ISD-1. I mean, it did come out 20 years later. Yeah. Advanced shields. And we could simplify things by uh, just doing two instances of that again. Makes sense. This is a little more difficult to destroy. Yeah. Hint, hint. I mean, yeah. come on, the Nebula class has hard time fighting this thing. And the Nebula yeah. was designed to fight this thing! And beat it! And it fails! <laughs> yeah, so, two instances of advanced shields. Two. So, this thing has seven talents. We have room for the profile talent. And... Sp standard special rules... Hyperdrive, deflector screens, nope, descriptor nope. trait. <laughs> yep, yep. Descriptor traits: Imperial Starship, Wedge of Doom, all the guns. Very much all the guns. Yep. And that would be the ISD two. What the ISD one would be if it specialized in anti-ship combat. And oh boy, does it specialize in making ships want to cry to their shipyard. Yep. Because shipyards are their mothers. Yep. Bye-bye. <laughs>